Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for a Real Housewives of Potomac review. Let's just get right into this very annoying fucking episode. So let's just get Monique out of the way. All right, Monique has several homes, as we all know, and she's trying to pass off the responsibilities of the management of those properties to her cousin slash assistant. But as we're walking around the first house that she and Chris shared, it was a bit of a bachelor pad and there are holes in the walls and wood panels missing from the bottom of doors. It's all very what the fuck. Um, and she's just, you know, like, I need you to take care of this. Like, why am I still having to notice these things? Why aren't you taking care of it? And he's like, well, you know, now that I see it, I got you. I got you. Can I get like $20,000 or something like that towards this? Can I get like a credit line? What's up with that? Now shut your stupid ass up. You get no credit line. Okay, anyway, we paying you, nigga, make work. Okay, we're giving you money, make work. All right, anyway, she and Fi uh, she lost, she and Fish, she, <laughs> she and Chris go fishing and have like a very telling scene about their relationship. Like, as she's talking about their relationship, it sounds like sometimes when me and Lyric are talking. Like, you don't wanna seem like you have this perfect relationship, so you're always saying, our relationship isn't perfect, but at the end of the day, <laughs> okay, at the end of the day, nigga, if you ain't in this bed with me, I got an issue, okay? If at the end of the day, we not together, I got a problem, okay? If at the end of the day, we ain't cool, I'm not cool, okay? That's what she was saying, all right? And I understand it because I get that, okay? I really see the love in that relationship. I don't think that she's just with him because he has money, and I've said that before. Um, but I really feel like she loved that big country ass nigga. Karen has a sit down with some white young lady. Um, I miss who she was, but then later on found out that she was the founder of the PAVE organization, which reaches out to women who have been um, raped or sexually assaulted in some type of way. And this is what Karen is about to start really, you know, delving into. She's going to have an event this episode about the PAVE situation, the PAVE um, I don't know what the, uh, organization. Thank you. Okay, Jesus. Um, I just woke up. <laughs> like when I just wake up, it's so hard for my, my mind to get where I needed to be uh, as far as my words. Anyway, so as she's sitting down talking to this woman, we have a very revealing conversation with her about her own rape. We did not know Karen was raped. As a college student, Karen was raped by a date. And she had a feeling from jump that she maybe shouldn't have went out with him. And... You know, that happened to her and it changed how she moved, you know, as it does for everyone that that happens to. And she built up a wall, you know, so just still having her husband and having her life turn out the way it has been. She is not a victim. OK, she is who she is because she survived, not because of what happened to her. And it's just like a really compelling story, to be honest with you. Like, I had no idea this really, you know, like this softens you to Karen so much more. Like, I was already like... Like really liking her this season yeah she's messy but I still really really like Karen Ashley is struggling through one of her first busy days at the restaurant okay shit's breaking people calling in she's running all over the place the place has you know a nice little bit of people in there and meanwhile, Giselle and Robin are in the car and Giselle is bucking Robin's head up that she needs to say something to Ashley about telling her business to everybody. Now, last review, I don't know if y'all caught on to it that I wasn't exactly all in agreement with the way that Ashley was moving, talking about it over and over again to all of these different people and walking up to Juan trying to get him to dance. Like, all of that I felt like I could have done without. Like, you could have not done that. Thank you. Try again. You know? Like, I I wasn't here for that but at the same time everybody's argument that they're not that close I don't know if I really feel that way because they have been friends for over a year now and yes they're just on the show and the other ladies are her real friends but at the end of the day y'all are all on this fucking show perpetrating like y'all get along like y'all fuck with one another if you don't really like her why the fuck is she in this circle you know what I'm saying like I just I'm sorry but that's not that's not about to be an excuse for me and at the end of the day we are on a reality show bitch okay this is what I want everybody to keep in mind we've been doing this now for years okay it is annoying to me when people get on these shows and want to be so upset when people probe into their lives this is what the fuck you signed up for, especially if you have a weird 
fucked up situation with your ex-husband where y'all live together and sleep in the same bed yet you keep telling yourself that if he's cheating on you it doesn't affect you because y'all aren't together but yet you do everything for him okay like it just it really blew me you guys so Giselle and Robin are in the car and they drive over to Ashley's restaurant and she's like hey you guys what a great surprise what's going on you guys want to have a seat and Robin's like no I don't want to have a seat I want you to stay out of my fucking business and it's like whoa 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 where's all this animosity coming from like where's the aggression coming from and she's like you you know went around and round and round talking about my business to everybody and Giselle is being her mouthpiece and her back up and saying how disrespectful she was and she was talking trash at this point they've started to like get all in her face and Robin is putting her hand in her face and Ashley's like get your get your hand out of my face Robin and this is when Robin would have got mushed I'm sorry like I know we was in her restaurant and Ashley probably did the best thing that she could have Done, which was ask them to leave continuously and told them she wasn't gonna say anything else about their relationship she don't give a fuck Giselle had to go deep and talk about how you know oh you got your failing restaurant and your failing marriage and it's like bitch your marriage is already failed why is it okay for Giselle to say that shit to Ashley but at the end of the day am I the only one that would have been like so you heard what happened <laughs> Like, really? We just had this whole conversation in front of Giselle and Robin and the gay friend and Sharice was out there. So it's like everybody knows what's going on. And I go and let Karen know because she's the last person that doesn't know. <laughs> and yes, this is very fucking messy and obnoxious of Ashley. But at the same time, I find it hard to believe that that's not what most people would realistically do. You may not have done it in the same setting, but you definitely would have got on the phone with a motherfucker later on and been like, bitch, I know you was inside when it happened, but uh. <laughs> okay, Ashley told her what she heard about wine. Okay, like, yes, girl. Okay, like, say it out there by the car. Ashley was trying to tell Robin what happened when they had that meeting a couple of episodes ago. Remember, they were sitting down at the table at Oz, and this is when they first started about some of the things, talking about some of the things Ashley could do to um, gain success at the restaurant, you know, just like to help her get more people in the door. They were having that conversation and I think that was when she was trying to, you know, talk to her about wine and what she had heard. But Robin shut her down so hard. So after that, it was like, okay, maybe I should talk to the other ladies so they can help me find a way to tell her. So that's what it looked like at first when you did it with Giselle. But then when you went back and did it with Karen, you was just being messy and running your fucking mouth. Like, let's just be real and honest about it. I can't, I can't save you from that. Okay, bitch, I can't save you from that. But at the end of the day... This shit was going to come out whether Ashley told it to Karen or not. Karen was going to find out anyway. And if there's somebody running back and forth to her restaurant telling her about this shit, eventually somebody was going to tell Giselle. Or somebody going to tell one of the other ladies. Obviously, it's somebody who knows they're on the show and wants to give them the tea about what's going on. Okay? Like, don't get me... Like, producers do this shit all the time. Okay? They got people on the side that they, you know, holding off for a little bit. And then they be like, alright, go ahead. And, you know, they do their thing. And now a person from the cast know something that everybody else doesn't know and they have to find a way how to tell everybody else what the fuck they just found out i understand everybody's aggravation with ashley but this to me took it too far showing up at her place of business getting all in her face talking about how her marriage and shit is failing when i feel like initially she was trying to come from a good place i don't feel like she was really coming from a bad place with it but it's like robin is so much in denial about it it's like bitch like when you look at what's going on i don't know if that should have came from ashley fine but at the end of the day that does not change anything that does not change the fact that robin is gonna sit there and smile while giselle gets all in ashley's face talking about ashley bitch this ain't got nothing to do with you why the fuck are you so rowdy why were you so turned and then you want to tell her that she needs to uh apologize to sharice bitch what won't you mind your fucking business that ain't got nothing to do with you i felt just how ashley felt about it bitch mind your business me and sharice situation ain't got nothing to do with you and another thing talking about sharice will drag you bitch sharice ain't gonna do shit okay sharice ain't gonna do shit i'm tired of y'all acting like y'all about to put y'all bougie ass fucking hands on somebody y'all ain't gonna do I ain't gonna do a goddamn thing bitch shut the fuck up okay y'all ain't gonna do a goddamn thing and that's very obvious okay so they proceeded to leave the restaurant after, you know, she kept telling them to get the fuck out. And they're like, yeah, in this empty ass restaurant. And I'm like, this is the one time that you really can't call the place empty. But I'm going to just go ahead and let you have it with your evil ass. Okay. Ashley meets with her mom and her brother. And basically the whole conversation is her telling them how the other girls are picking on her. And I'm like, 
they picking on you, bitch, but you got a part in this shit, too. Like, why are you telling it like you ain't doing nothing? But I did like how rowdy moms was. Don't let them bully you. Do not. Ooh, girl. Mm, I'm getting hot. I'm getting hot. <laughs> Robin is trying to have a conversation with Juan. And this is when shit starts to, like, leak out the bottom. Like, <laughs> bitch, it's leaking. Okay? Catch it. It's leaking. You oblivious in denial. And it's leaking out on the floor. Okay? She's talking to Juan about, I guess, trying to get his schedule together for this basket camp that they're starting up and somebody wants to come and talk to him and she's asking him about how he wants to do it and you know he's like well I don't want him to you know I don't want to have to go any other place you know whatever he was saying about not having to go to them for the interview and she says well okay well do you want them to come to you well I just said that and we both me and Larry sitting up there like that nigga did not just say that that nigga did not just say that like so you can tell he has some aggravation and aggression towards Robin and I'm not exactly sure why is it because he feels like bitch you live with me we together we sleeping in the same bed but you have been continuously for however long they've been doing this shit acting like it's not happening and he goes in the back and talks to a producer like in a closet or some shit and he's like I can't keep doing this I'm a grown ass man okay and the producer is like do you want to be with her he was like I would have me and my kids would have left already like, I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? And he was saying how he really wants to be in a relationship. He wants to share his life with someone. And I'm like, nigga, you are sharing your life with someone. You're just not sharing your emotions and your, your love with someone. But you're definitely sharing your life with this bitch. It's all very confusing. And she's just walking around smiling like she doesn't know what the fuck is going on. Talking about, I am not going to bring up Ashley's bullshit to wine. You know, because I'm like already kind of tiptoeing around him. And it's like, really, bitch? Really? You tiptoeing around a nigga in your own house? The motherfucker that you taking care of and you tiptoeing around him? Wait! Cherise goes shopping with her daughter in a very emotional scene while she tells her daughter that even though papers have not been filed, she and her daughter's father are probably not going to get back together or be together. And she's expecting her daughter to cry like she is crying. And Skylar is like, well, he's not really here anyway. He's never really been here, so not really like an adjustment I have to make and I totally understand how heartbreaking this is for Sharice but she and Giselle um have worked on my last nerve <laughs> her Robin and Giselle have those three have worked on my last nerve so I find it hard to be compassionate for her I kind of feel like like I mean you can't tell women how to feel you can't tell women what to do like they do shit in their own time this is great okay but this is just my opinion and I really feel like at this point, Sharice, you and that man have not been together for years for real. Like, come on. Why is this just now so fucking, you know, depressing to you with every episode you're crying about it, but yet no papers have been filed? What? Like, I'm just so confused about it. Are y'all together or y'all not together? Are you trying to work it out or are you not trying to work it out? To me, it always seems like it's been over, it's over, and y'all just haven't filled out any paperwork over it. And then one moment you're crying over it, but the next minute you're, you know, this is the new Shasha and I'm liberated and all of this shit. So it's just like, I know you're a woman and it's your prerogative to go back and forth and it's probably the most honest we're gonna get out of Sharice um I'm tired of bipolarism I'm gonna just go ahead and say that I'm, I'm tired of it I'm tired of her having several different personalities and me having to readjust how I feel about her because of it uh, whatever in another very public attempt to get Robin to see that she's in fucking denial, Sharice invites Dr. Jeff to lunch with Robin so that she can see that therapy is not such a bad idea. And Robin says what she's been saying, that therapy means that there is something that needs to be fixed and she doesn't feel like she needs to be fixed. But then she says that while they were married she always wanted she and Juan to get therapy because she felt like there was a block or a breakdown in communication between the, the two of them and because of his infidelity she has put up a wall so even though he would want a relationship with her she has been too you know with the wall up to even get into that with him because she's too scared that he's going to hurt her again and I'm like well why are you still living with him isn't that still leaving you? Like, I just, I don't get it because I feel like you're leaving yourself open to get hurt because you're still living and, and sharing a life with somebody who you do not trust just because you got a divorce and nothing actually changed. Nothing actually changed. You didn't even give yourself a chance to be free and, and really assess your emotions. And now it's just been years and years of you 
feeling how you felt at base level he cheated on me and then you know i'm taking care of him and there's a possibility he's still gonna leave me for somebody else and then we have these kids and now i hear from one one of my homegirls a, a bitch on the street however you want to look at ashley that you're cheating on me but then i'm walking on eggshells in a house that we share together and then we lost all our money bitch you are just layering the issues because you never really want to deal with them and her talking to Dr. Jeff, she gets all emotional and, you know, she starts to cry and, you know, Sharice tries to comfort her. And he's just like, I think that you will really, you know, benefit from therapy just because you need to get a lot of things off your chest that you're carrying around. And that is so true. She definitely needs therapy. Y'all, it's always coming from a good place. Like, I get upset with women when they do shit like this because I know how it feels to be embarrassed and feel hurt like that. And whenever women continuously leave themselves open for the jab I get upset because I'm like why are you letting them do this to you stop it <laughs> like stop it back off I don't give a fuck how you feel about them you better put that shit aside how you feel about your yourself should always matter more <laughs> always I don't give a fuck it should always matter more and I feel like these women are constantly putting this even either putting the men in front of themselves or putting the whole you know like scene the whole presentation of me and that person, that whole look that they like so much, the idea of that relationship, they put that before how they actually are treating and taking care of themselves in a situation. That shit is fucking sad to me. So we go to Karen's paid event and Don Lemon is there and we all know that Don Lemon is homosexual and he tells us that when he had his coming out story, he decided to tell the whole story, which was that he was also molested as a child. And I had no idea, Don Lemon. Oh, my God. So he does his thing. He gets up there and does his speech. It was all very touching. And then Karen gets up there after. Now, I'm skipping shit because I'm going to get to that part later. Karen gets up there and gives her speech. And she's very emotional. And all the ladies are really feeling what she's saying and understanding. And just looking at her in a whole nother way when she comes off stage. Everybody is so, you know, oh, my God, Karen, that was awesome. Oh, my God, Karen, I know that's hard. We're so here for you. Um, fine. I got that out of the way. When we first get there, Karen tells Ashley, look, bitch, I know you got into it with them two other ladies, but I don't need no drama at this event, okay? In so many words, okay? This is what she tells her. Ashley goes over when she sees Giselle and Robin come in and she actually does speak to them. Robin speaks back, which was kind of like, oh, you gonna speak back, but Giselle had absolutely nothing to say because like I said, she's an evil bitch. Um, Robin had to leave because she had another event and Karen was floating around the room talking to everybody because it was her event. Um, and first Ashley is like, you know, hey Sharice, you know, and Sharice is ignoring her. Sharice is not saying anything to her, which I think is so fucking ridiculous. You're a grown ass woman. Can you really not speak to somebody and say hello or, or whatever? It's just, it was just really fucking petty to me. Like, and I'm normally petty queen, but it just seemed unnecessary. Say hello, say yeah, we can talk another time and keep it fucking pushing. But standing up there, you look fucking childish, bitch. You look hella childish. So... As she's trying to talk to Sharice, Giselle is like, maybe not right now, Ash. Maybe not today, Ash. And it's like, Giselle, oh my God, would you please go wash your fucking face, bitch. Do me a favor. Stop looking like a clown. Get the fuck out of here with your thirsty for attention, hating ass, bitch. Oh my God, works on my nerves. And this is what even blew me even more. Monique is like, you know, because her pastor told her she should apologize to Giselle for calling her a trick. Mind you, Karen and uh, Giselle met up uh, to do some charity work and this is when she told her about the paid thing. And she also told her that uh, Monique called her a trick. So she knows that Monique called her a trick when she wasn't there. But Monique is like, you know, maybe we can get together. Maybe we can talk over the phone, have a conversation, you know, and settle our things too. I know this is not the time or the place. But maybe you want to put your number in my phone and we can talk. And she's like, hmm. I don't know let me think about it I don't know I mean and then like Monique is like hey I'm not gonna chase you that's fine she and Ashley you know kind of walk to the side and Sharice and Giselle walk off Sharice is trying to convince Giselle that Monique is trying yet she's acting the exact same way with Ashley blows me blows me and here's another thing Yes, what Ashley said to Sharice might have been fucked up, but what Sharice said to Ashley first was very demeaning. If I was her, I would get good and well tired of them bitches acting like I wasn't a grown-ass woman just because I was younger than them and calling me little girl and all of this type of shit just because I won't allow somebody to basically disrespect the fuck out of me. Nah, 
Do I think that Ashley has the perfect marriage and her shit might gonna last forever? Maybe not. I don't think so. I don't really know. All right. I don't think it's perfect, obviously. I don't know if they're going to stay married. But at the end of the day, what's going on in my shit does not change the fact that you always crying to me about your shit and then get mad when I say something about it. Okay. Like she does ask and she does probe. But that was more so about like, you know, I really want you to move on. And oh my God, Eddie's over there. I never met him. Should I like, you know, say something? Like all of that shit is stupid. But at the end of the day, it's not irrational. So I'm just like looking at these bitches like, why did y'all even come on this show, bro? Why did y'all even come on this show with this bullshit? Like, oh my God, it's so tiring. It's so tiring. And Ashley made a comment about the menopause being real in a room. And I was like, yes, it is, bitch. I totally agree how the two young bitches seem to have the most grace in class about some shit than the two old bitches that's just mad. Because first of all, let's be honest, Robin, Giselle, and... And uh, Sharice are mad, but they're not really mad at Monique and Ashley. They're more mad at them, themselves for being in marriages that ended up fucking them over. And also mad at the men, but too scared to actually be mad at the men because they still love them and need something from them. And I'm not talking about money. I'm just talking about like you love them. You still need for things to be cordial. So you're not going to go off like you really, really want to. I'm sorry, but that's how it seems to me. Um... Yeah, that was Real Housewives of Potomac. Totally annoyed me this episode, but really good and juicy, right? Oh my god. Like, comment, and subscribe and come back, you guys. Love ya. Oh my mama, mama. on oh my hood. I look fly. Yeah, I look